all right so I'm going to uh, uh, set up a lab now this lab is going to show you how to configure multiple networks uh, using different mode but also how to uh, configure uh, firewall rules uh, for your network and uh, finally I'm going to walk you guys through how to create a multi-homed uh, virtual machines uh, what that really means is a virtual machine that is connected to more than one network at any given time or probably more than two networks because the dual home to be just two network card and multi will be more than two so uh, stay tuned as we kind of go ahead and uh, run through this uh, you know through this exercise the first thing I'm going to try to do over here is to come over here and create a virtual network and this virtual network I'm going to configure it in such a way that is going to have uh, you know an auto you know generated subnet so without wasting much time so here is it and I'm going to call this uh, the name of this machine I'm going to call it the loot and I'm going to put it at the automatic and um, one of the things I'm going to do over here is to decide you know you see all these rules that come by default so I have to decide you know if I'm going to make it uh, um, ability to communicate internally and I'm going to check this box and you can see this rule that will allow anybody uh, to ping from any location from any network to ping uh, you know any of the VM on this network to loot and also if you look at it over here it would also allow people from this network only to be able um, to um, you know allow communication among all the system from any port in other words any VMs on any port will be able to interact with any system within the network and this one will allow anybody from any location to RDP into the loop network and same over here this will allow anybody from any network to SSH into this uh, uh, network again I've decided to make the uh, you know the subnet to be automatic which means that uh, GCP is going to automatically populate the regions and it's going to allocate the subnet address for me so here we go while that is working the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do I'm going to go ahead and create another network and this time around I'm going to call this one Minneapolis I'm going to call it Minneapolis and I'm going to make this one to be a custom right gonna make it to be a custom and I'm going to then make a couple of uh, uh, decision on what I want to do here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a region I'm gonna use a US Central one here to specify uh, the region also I have to decide what name I'm gonna give to the you know to the sub to the subnet uh, uh, name of this particular uh, machine because as you see I have to come over and specify the subnet I'm just simply going to call it uh, Minneapolis uh, subnet uh, iPhone US and then I have to specify what's going to be my uh, the address the network address of the subnet and uh, because it's a uh, custom mode we selected I have to come over here and specify that so I can go ahead and click down here and if you come over here you would see something very interesting that if I click this command line it's going to show me the command that I could have used to create these you know steps here uh, just using the command line which in some cases uh, is much faster so it's important for you to see that we can easily generate the command line if you want to do so and you can copy it and use it a little bit later Having done that, uh, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do now is then go ahead and uh, go to uh, create uh, to create this new uh, additional net. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and then create a Rochester uh, network, but I'm going to use command line since I've shown you guys, you know, how you can easily generate this command line on your own. It's really not as hard as you might think. I can come over here. And then go ahead and say G Cloud Compute Networks create Rochester. That's the name of the network. And I'm saying I want to be the uh, subnet to be in a custom mode, which means I'm going to have to set up my own subnet on my home. And the next thing is I'm going to type the command 
for the subnet once this one is done can create uh, either the network for that so the next thing is I'm gonna go ahead and type uh, my command you can see over here G cloud networks and I'm saying I want to create the subnet you know create and that's gonna be a Rochester subnet and then the network is Rochester the region is central one and I'm going to find a IP address range of that new subnet that I've just uh, you know created and here we're going to create another subnet as you can see gcloud network subnet and create Rochester you know EU the network is Rochester the region is you know Europe West 1 and I'm going to go ahead and run this command so I can go ahead and run a network list to take a look at uh, the list of networks that I have here common error that people often make and I've made that same error before myself is to make a mistake of not put S on the networks here so if you do that you will get an error message so as you can see over here our default is auto dilute is auto and we have two custom uh, system here that we've uh, you know that we've created it's important for you to uh, remember how we set this up because oftentimes sometimes you you would like to kind of take a look at all the networks one other thing you can also do is you can take a look at all the subnets that we have here uh, and sort them by network okay and uh, that will run you through most of what we've done so far uh, and you can take a look at them it's uh, quite uh, um, you know interesting uh, to take a look so the next thing that you can see here we can easily take a look at our network view here you can see a lot of them as you can see dilute and the default network has the most subnet and uh, Minneapolis only have you know the subnet that you know we actually you know create for them uh, that's very very important for us to kind of note that because if we if you don't if you don't cache that uh, we might actually miss some very important exercise the next thing I'm going to actually do over here before I go too far is I'm going to create VMs in each of these uh, lab uh, this network um, precisely I'm going to create uh, one VM and I'm going to put it in uh, Rochester you know uh, here is my so I have Rochester here with just, uh, you know, custom here. I have another one here in Minneapolis. Actually, I'm going to create two VM and I'm going to put both of them in Minneapolis. I, I want to show you something really quick because I think it's very, very important. Remember, Minneapolis is one of those custom uh, stuff that we create. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to call this Minneapolis 1. Minneapolis 1. And I'm going to put it in Iowa. It's going to be just these. I'm going to change this one and I'm going to make it to be Ubuntu 14. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to create. And while that one is going, I'm going to create another VM. And I'm going to call this one uh, Minneapolis 2. Minneapolis 2. I'm going to drop it in the central Iowa as well. Change this one to Ubuntu 14. Select OK here. And I'm going to go ahead and create this to VM. What I really want to show you, uh, you know, there's something that I just did now that I didn't pay attention to uh, while I was creating this VM. I didn't pay attention to select what network I actually want them to be located uh, we're gonna see how this is gonna pan out a little bit later uh, and in your lab that's something that you want to pay a little extra attention to because this machine now most likely is gonna go into the default you know uh, network uh, and I don't want it to be in the default network so I'm gonna grab this machine here now and I'm gonna go edit it and as I said earlier, you can see it's in the default network. But I don't want it in the default network. I can select over here, uh, go to default network here. What can I do? I can change it. I can change it. You know, 
uh, there are times when a system may not allow you to just change uh, you know the network card uh, because the machine is actually uh, running and uh, you might not be able to just change it or come over here as you can see over here there's little to what I could do over here but there's something I can do and I will show you exactly how that will work let me try and power up this machine I'm going to turn it off stop it so I'm going to create a VM uh, the first one being Minneapolis Call it one I'm going to put it in uh, East Central Iowa and I'm going to make it a uh, Ubuntu 14 but watch this side I'm gonna select and make sure that I put it in the right network that I want it to be and I have a choice here you can see here is by default uh, it's on uh, uh, default network but I don't want that so I'm gonna put it in Minneapolis and you can see how I can specify uh, which network I want my machine to be uh, by specifying that, I'm saying I want it to be in Minneapolis network. I'm going to go to create. I'm going to create another machine here. I'm going to call it uh, Minneapolis 2. I'm going to put it right on uh, Central Iowa. I'm going to come over here and put it uh, Ubuntu as a guest operating system. And here is where I can choose to put this thing, you know, within the same network or outside the, outside the different network. I'm going to go ahead and put it still in Minneapolis here. But I'm going to begin to do some things a little differently. Actually, um, just for the for the sake of some of the exercises that we're going to still be doing um, I'm going to I'll leave this one in Minneapolis for now and I will do some other experiment with you guys later to show you how I'm going to uh, run this a little bit separately here I'm going to call these uh, let's call it uh, Duluth okay I'm going to call this Duluth I'm going to put in Duluth in Central here and I'm going to put this one in guest operating system my network I'm going to specify this one to be in Duluth network drop it right in Duluth go ahead and say done and go ahead and create if I have two machines in Minneapolis you know well, Duluth in uh, Duluth network I have uh, another one in um, I can create another one in Russia so but for now let's let's leave it like this I'm gonna wait for this to finish and then we're gonna go on from here I'm going to use uh, I think I ran the wrong command earlier on so the command that I need to type here is uh, this G cloud compute uh, images list and if I run this it's going to return all the images that I need uh, one thing I wanted to take note of here is the the name at the top. This is my image family name, right? And this is the uh, image project name. You're going to need these two information to specify what OS you want to install. So, for example, if I were to retype the command that I typed earlier on, I'm going to see if I see how it is here. Right, I'll specify where I want it to be, but I'm gonna need to come over here and type my image family. I don't get anything, I will show me one second here. Let me make sure I'm typing the right, uh, the right instance here to make sure this is right. So I think I find out where my mistake is. If you look at the image family name I entered this but if you realize the image family name here is the title for family here so I entered the wrong one so what I need to do this is Ubuntu 14 here 
that is the image family name here and that is the image project so what I need to do is to copy this and now the other one so I'll come back here and I will come back and clean this up and if you remember earlier that I typed it this is LTS um, this is Ubuntu iPhone 1404-LTS let's look at this dash LTS let's type it now and see if this works and it looks like uh, this is working and I can easily verify what I'm doing over here see now and I have this machine working now over here. I know it took a little bit of time, but I think this is very important for us to kind of make sure we get that right. Again, you have to specify the family name and of course the project name. Family name, project name. And how do I get to this point? Type GC Cloud, uh, GC, G Cloud Compute Image List. That's how you determine what guest operating system and you specify the you know, image family name and of course the image project. Uh, you'll be on your way to uh, your computer installation all right so uh, without wasting any much time I'm going to go over here and uh, quickly uh, open up the shell for for Duluth which I have here and I'm going to go ahead I'm actually going to clear my screen here uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for Minneapolis here uh, have both of them open here and you're going to see something that I'm going to do a little bit interesting here. If you remember that uh, Duluth is automatically created for the submit, and it's got uh, you know port 22, port uh, uh, port 22. If you want to look at it here, here's the firewall rules. You will see that for Duluth, it's got RDP, SSH, ICMP. You know all the machine internally working, and you have the same thing for default. But Minneapolis doesn't have any entry and as we said earlier before any time you do not have an entry on the firewall the default entry is to refuse every you know uh, incoming connection and allow every outgoing connection so here we are now I've got these uh, these two operating see that my Minneapolis wouldn't even let anything connect from outside because there is really nothing on it at all. Uh, I can do the same thing here for my uh, Rochester. And remember, we only have for Duluth and uh, default. So if you try to connect to this one as well, you're most likely going to get an error message because you know we have you know uh, refuse uh, by default for that uh, custom network. As you can see now, when I try to connect to this machine in Rochester, um, you know, I was not able to, to go through. Essentially, um, I was denied because for this Rochester network, as you can see, it's got no entry on the network for these. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, create a firewall entry for for Rochester and look at what we're doing right now, we're essentially saying, you know, G Cloud allow firewall rules, you know, for ICMP, SSH, direction, any incoming traffic, priority is 1000. For Rochester network, allow ICMP for 22, uh, for TCP, and then RDP. And this will allow any incoming traffic from any network, uh, you know, to, to penetrate into that network. So I'm going to go ahead and allow this to, to be done. And uh, while this is going, I'm going to try and retry uh, the thing we did earlier on. There you go. As you can see, as the firewall is created now, I can connect to, to Rochester. Uh, from outside on this particular uh, on this particular port it uh, it's rather important for us to kind of take note of that because with the way this is configured now it makes it very easy for us now to conf you know to, to, to connect to it 
all right so here is the interesting part let's test all this uh, connectivity that we have across these two networks so this is Rochester here and this is Duluth here remember these two network allows you know incoming traffic but let's test it uh, the first thing I'm gonna try to do let me run uh, here is a uh, Duluth here so I'm gonna ping Duluth Duluth's own network 10.128 dot zero dot two we have a response that's good then I'm gonna go up here and then go ahead and ping do its own external you know uh, interface card so that's 35 dot two 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 dot two one nine dot one five two and you can see can get on the external interface of itself I will do the same thing for my Rochester which is 172.16.0.2 and that works just fine and we're gonna paint the external uh, interface as well 35.192.139 dot five four and we can see that works as well now that one is straightforward that's expected now let's try and see if we can ping each other's um, internal IP address so this is the internal IP address of the load let me see if I can ping it from outside here from another machine As you can see I'm not able to the next thing is let's try and see if I can ping the external IP address of the loot from here put over here as you can see I'm able to ping from outside but how about this guy can this guy ping the external interface of this guy so this is the internal IP address of Rochester and then after that we have the external one that I'm gonna try to see if I can ping so let's try the external here because you know internet is not gonna work let's try from here as you can see they both can easily ping each other's external because we have it you know wide open this connectivity across uh, but the only thing they cannot do is they cannot ping each other's internal um, IP address because the rule we have for internal if you remember the rule for internal pinging is only for systems that are within the network and not zero 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 here from any uh, any direction so that's very very important now we're gonna create uh, very quickly here wrap up this lab we're gonna create an instance uh, sorry motor home virtual machine and then this is the set that it's supposed to be remember you gotta make it for CPU because we're gonna it's gonna have multiple network card otherwise it's gonna fail uh, that's very important I'm gonna create Ubuntu here and I'm gonna come over here and ensure that it's got multiple network connection it's already connected by default to, uh, to default uh, uh, network so I'm gonna come over here and attach it to Minneapolis and I'm gonna come over here and add additional card attach it down here to Rochester okay and uh, if you were to go over here because you already have three over here and the third one you probably wonder and say why can't I add Duluth well if you look at Duluth you realize that they have the same exact network address with default so that's why you have that's why you cannot have IP range overlapping. See the network address for Duluth, 10128020. So 
so the one for default tank one two eight zero zero twenty that's why otherwise you could easily uh have that you know as it is um and it's, as it is done like that so that's one of the reasons why you couldn't have the, the loot to it but i have three here all right so i'm gonna go ahead and create and while this one is creating i'm gonna go ahead and create a firewall rule for minneapolis i come over here and i can give it any name i want um i can say minneapolis allow everything so i can come over here and just type this name here and um i have my network here it's going to be for minneapolis and um i can specify uh the ip range if i want it to apply to everybody every incoming traffic then i'm going to have to then come over on this side here and this will at, apply to everybody it will apply to everybody uh there's this uh, uh target here and i can say all instances in the network okay not just a target all instances in the network and if i come over here i'm going to have to come and specify the port here i can say port 22 and commer the uh, port 3389 that's the port for rdp over here i can type my nicmp and then go ahead and create this rule and now you will see i'm creating an entry now for icmp and that will allow any traffic on icmp to go through all right now my multi-home network here is, is, is finished and remember this multi-home is connected to rochester it's also connected to default and if i type if config here you could see it's got all the network connection now remember earlier on when i was playing between the loot and uh and rochester you will notice that they could not ping each other's internal ip address remember here we were here and we do and we run this and you see rochester couldn't ping you know because it's only belong to internal network and the firewall does not allow it to cross but you would see that with this guy here because it's connected to more than one system um i potentially could you know connect to rochester here i'm gonna uh, close all this one out close all this one out uh and take this one out of the question i want to see where we're going so i can easily copy rochester here ip address here and i'm going to try and ping and you can see it responded also <clears throat> i can come over to minneapolis here and you can see also they responded the reason why this machine can ping multiple internal ip addresses is because it is connected to more than one network internally in a way you can actually use this machine as a router all right i hope you will enjoy the lab i will go ahead and create another lab after this and uh, that would help us uh, you know kind of uh, you know recapitulate some of what we've talked about in terms of firewall network access control and so on and so forth